now. Now we are friends. So it's very, uh, very nice to be here. Thanks a lot for inviting. Uh, and I have decided to just speak on five topics that I think is well suited for uh, an plenary discussion. Uh, each of them is a big topic in itself and we can discuss for hours, but I selected five in order to inspire for the future discussion this afternoon. Uh, and I will not talk anything about Lund University, etc., and my background that we can take in a break. So I just focus on <coughs> what's on the agenda today. So my five topics is, the first one is related to the innovation ecosystem, related to manufacturing. The second one is the small and medium-sized enterprises dimension. Then we have innovation capabilities. We have the product, uh, product service development that is needed for growth in any country. Uh, and then I have uh, one last one, that uh, collaboration and mission that we will discuss a little bit about. So, over to the first one then. So, oh, yeah, now I'm on. Uh, any student or researcher or person at a company can have an innovation. And commonly this first phase is supported in the ecosystem. You get some funding. Uh, you get some support, you get the business development, and the first stages normally fly quite well, if it's not a, a totally bad idea. So there you get some support. The problem is the next phase, <coughs> uh, uh, where you <coughs> really need money and you really need real support, then you hit the wall, so to say. The, uh, this uh, phase has many names, I call it demanding, it's called the death valley, etc. Uh, and it's the same in Sweden, and I, uh, I have wor worked a little bit with Baltics, and it's quite similar in no Northern Europe, at least. So it's very difficult to get capital and, and make companies be settled here in North Europe. So either they are sold or they die. So I would like to see much more <coughs> focus uh, on the ecosystem to support these potential companies so they are established here. It's needed both capital and it's needed competence. A lot of business development people, they write very nice business plans, but they lack of manufacturing strategy, and it's very hard to get uh, capital in this sector. If you have a physical product without digital content, you are almost dead. If you have a physical product with some digital content, then you maybe get some, some funding. So this is really important that we get support to get the companies established here. Then we move over to the small and medium sized enterprise. It's my second one. There is so many small companies that fight to survive. They don't have any transformation capabilities at all. And it's really needed, and it's needed now. Without any people looking at the future, you will have hard to survive in the future. So you need a lot more people. Oh, here it comes. Yeah. You need a lot more people in any small and medium sized company that is focused on the next steps to be taken on transformation. And it's totally different competence compared to continuous operation that they are very good at. So it's a different skill that is needed. And you need a mindset that as soon as we gain some and we improve in the manufacturing system and, and we, we can free some resources, you need to use these resources in order to work with the, with the future, so to say. So the blue one here is illustrating that the people you uh, get, uh, uh, that you release fr from improving the operational area, you need to use them, not fire them. So you need to have a mindset, a lot more people in the future will work with transformation and innovation, and you d if you do not manage this, you will s uh, not survive. That is qu uh, quite clear. And it's not so easy. I, I, of course, illustration here is very easy, but to do it in reality is very hard. So, now I come over to my third one. Uh, I work quite a lot of building innovation capabilities as companies, and it's not an easy task either. And I used to use the illustration from quality development. So many years ago, when you work with quality development in any company, you just pointed at, oh, it's the people over there in a small office. They work with quality development, but then you, uh, people find out this is not the way to work. You need to integrate quality into the daily work. And now everyone at the company is engaged in quality development. It's quite clear. Now innovation has taken the same journey. Some years back, it was a small office, people pointed like this, oh, innovation, it's not my task, ask the innovative guy over there, etc. It was just a few people engaged in innovation. 
but what we now see is that it's thought to be integrated as part of the corporate, let's say, uh, infrastructure or uh, corporate ecosystem. So innovation needs to be in capability like working with quality or anything else. It takes some time and it's pretty much culture to get there. So I will give you some support in order to help you think about this. So commonly at a company you have few engaged and your lack of structure is quite common. That is reality. So what you need is to see that innovation capability is a critical asset. If you have a leader that don't understand that, it's no idea to try at all. You need leadership and you need to understand that innovation capability is a critical asset. And then the first step you do is to engage much more people. You need to engage the company. Every, every uh, employee should be part of this. Of course, you will not manage everyone. It's always a few that doesn't like this at all. But you try to engage all. And then you need to have a holo holistic view. And there here I, I think this is quite important. It starts in the top and it starts with a holistic view and you need some structure and principles. It doesn't need to be nitty gritty procedures, but you need some principles in order to guide the workforce and in order to reach results. And, and you engage the team. And fourth in this row is methods. Quite commonly when company work with innovation, they start with an method or a tool, but don't start with a tool, start with the leadership and engage more. Uh, that is how you get there. It's not an easy task, but it's quite important principle. And this is a picture here is from the ISO standard. It's quite, ISO standard can be very boring and very bad, but there is some good insights in the ISO 56002 standard for innovation management can be used. So this picture just say that you need a holistic view engaged in all from top to bottom and you need some principles. So that was a little bit about the innovation capabilities. So let's move over to product and service development for economic growth. So any country that would like to climb up on the global innovation index, uh, there are of course many aspects, but one of them is to work with the product service offering you have. Uh, and uh, uh, the good news is on Monday you can read the Global Innovation Index 2021. I tried to catch it before the presentation, but I didn't get it out. But on Monday you can see whether Latvia is improving or, or not. So on Monday it will be released. So I always, when I'm out talking, fight for the principle that you need to do your utmost to get startup companies to small and medium sized enterprises to large with own product and services they need to be in your country. Otherwise you will be a sub supplier uh, country and you will have, have very hard times to let's say improve the turnover per citizen in that country. You will be a supplier country, and that is not so good. So you need to get your own product and services that is established here with global brands. That will help you a lot to climb in the Global Innovation Index. Of course, a very huge and big step to take, but uh, it's quite clear. So Sweden is quite highly rated because we have a lot of huge enterprises with a lot of patents, and they are driving our economy quite well. But there are countries that are going up and normally they are good at product development and, and building these kind of systems. That was the fourth one. Then we have the last one. No, sorry, I have one more on this in order to motivate wh what I'm saying. So <clears throat> why is it so important to have the product development or R&D combined with manufacturing in your country? It's because that will be the lowest complexity you have to serve a market. And when you have very high market fluctuation, you need to settle the l lowest complexity in order to survive. If you set up a very complex structure with R&D in one country, you have manufacturing different locations, etc., you will, you will have huge problems to manage this in a changing environment where the customers has different demands on a daily basis, so to say. So if you can set a structure, with the lowest complexity that is robust, you have modular structure on your uh, products, you have a manufacturing system that can react, and you are in control of this, then you can ma manage the situation. So it's very important to have R&D manufacturing within the country. That will help you to learn and you will be better for the future. 
Then we move over to a more nice one that I like very much. That is that we are very small countries, Nordics and Sweden, where I come from, you are a small country. And we have, uh, since many years, we need to go abroad because we, are too, we, have, we do not have a domestic market. So we need to go abroad, we need to collaborate, otherwise we will not survive. And this is really good, and this can be an opportunity now. So what we see is that a lot of calls from EU is related more to mission. We need to create some kind of real impact and this can be an opportunity for countries that we are from. So we need to collaborate in a much better way. Uh, and if you should solve complex problems, then you need to work in an integrated way. You cannot sit in a distributed team. You need to work together in order to solve complex problems. And if you have a mission, then you need to work together. So I can see an opportunity here that we collaborate over our borders in Baltics and in Nordics in order to solve uh, uh, mission-related problems and have an impact in society. So this can, of course, be discussed lengthy as well, this fifth one. So I brought up today five different topics. One is related to innovation and manufacturing and the supporting ecosystem to ensure that we get manufacturing here. The second was, was, one was related to the small and medium-sized companies and the need for transformation capabilities and competence. And the third one was innovation capabilities and how to build that. It starts the, in the top with the leadership. And then we have the fourth one where you need to develop a product service system in your country that will drive your economic growth if you manage to do that. And then the last one was that the more mission-related EU calls will help us to collaborate more. So let's start today. Thanks a lot.